afternoon, church. Welcome to our 12 p.m. service. Uh, we believe that you're having a great Lent season. Uh, but if you have any prayer requests, please put in the prayer cards right in front of you and pass it on to the ushering team. And we'll pray for it during your service. But church, Bible says God is faithful till the end. Bible even goes further and says that Jesus was faithful till death and even till the point of cross. What a faithful God we have, church. So come on, let's worship Him and show Him, that, for, show him our thankfulness for His amazing faithfulness towards us. Hey, church? Thank you, church.
this together. In 2018, one evening, my father developed chest pain. We doubted that it might be a heart stroke and we immediately took him to a nearest hospital. The doctors did all the tests and confirmed that that's a heart stroke and it's a massive heart stroke and the chances of survival are very less. The chief doctor said it's a massive heart stroke, there are very few chances of survival and he didn't give any guarantee to us. And he said the best that he can do is he'll give a medicine so that he'll sleep and the transition would be smooth for him. In other words, he'll die in peace. We told him that it can't be that way and we told him that we will not doubt his efforts and we requested him to do whatever best that is possible for him. They started the process. They identified the block in his blood vessel and they placed a stent and shifted him to ICU. They said only after 24 hours they'll be able to 
confirm his condition. Even after 24 hours, doctors didn't give any hope. We would become very anxious and stressful. God is our only hope. All that we could do was pray for him and ask God to intervene into his situation. Days passed by, he didn't show any sign of recovery. After a week, he started recovering slowly. One day while I was feeding him, he developed severe seizures. Doctors told us that he developed a severe pneumonia and they had to treat him for that. Due to pneumonia, his oxygen levels came down to 80 and it took him three weeks to recover. In three weeks, doctors didn't give any hope. At least in three occasions, they told us that he'll not make it to the next day. Once they even told us that we can make preparations for his funeral. But the God our healer has healed him, delivered him and strengthened him. On 24th day, he got discharged from the hospital. We thank God for answering our prayers. My father is leading a normal, healthy life. I'm Jesus Ratno, my father Moses, and this is our story of hope. I see your face in every sunrise The colors of the morning inside your eyes The world awaits in the light of the day I look up to the sky and say You're beautiful
in his word that he will make all things all things beautiful in his perfect time and in his perfect will he makes things beautiful and this morning I feel that's the promise that he has all of the power all of the glory to turn things around he can bring beauty out of ashes bring beautiful things out of the dust. 
Can I just encourage everyone, just for the next couple of seconds, won't you just lift up your hands? Won't you just reach out and just soak right now into this beautiful moment? Such a beautiful presence of God in this place, right? And uh, reading from Psalms chapter 73, verse 26, it says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forevermore. Amen. And with that small verse, I just want to share that it's it's absolutely okay uh, if things are fall, if, if you feel like things are uh, fa- falling apart and if you feel like walls are closing in and if you feel like the mountains that you're facing are big but just know that God our God is bigger than our mountains amen he's so big he's all powerful and above all over everything he's able and in his presence every sickness will be healed amen come on let's just continue to worship and just declare his name right now come on let's take this moment spirit of god fall right here right now you fall in this place Fill us with your love, your mercy.
just declared the bible says that this is the name that is powerful more greater more stronger than any other name i don't know how you walked into this place what are the circumstances the situations the sicknesses the trials and the tribulations that you're going through but can i remind you today that these are all just mere names in front of the name that is far more greater and that is the name of jesus Jesus the name of Jesus is the confidence of a believer it is the greatest weapon that you and I can possess come on church if you're going through something if you're praying to God come on want you tap into everything that this name has to offer right now want you take the next 30 40 seconds and start declaring the name of Jesus on your situation over your sickness over your body over your family over your children come on start declaring the name of Jesus from the front to the back once you open up your mouth and start declaring declaring this great name that is far greater dear heavenly father we just come to you right now god and we know jesus all that you have done for us is good we want to thank you for who you are you are the god who sustains us you are a faithful god and we want to thank you for this name jesus that is far greater than any other name we want to thank you for all the access that we have because of this name Jesus, we want to thank you for the power that this name holds right now, God. And even as your children, Father, declare your name over this situation. As they lift up their hands and call out to you, Lord, we believe that this atmosphere is changing. You are moving in this place right now. You are moving in, this, in their lives right now, God. We know, Father, that you're changing their situations, that you're moving their mountains. You're bringing families back together. You're reuniting marriages. You are healing sick bodies right now, Jesus. Father, we believe right now that bondages are being broken. Addictions are being set free, God, because of your name. Right now, Father, we declare over every body that is sick, Jesus. We know that your name is far more greater than the doctor's report, Father. And we declare that your name is powerful than cancer, is powerful than COVID, is powerful than autoimmune disorders, it is powerful than genetic disorders, and we come against all those names and the lies of the enemy and we declare your power on their bodies and we declare them healed and whole right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father for all that you're doing in this place right now God. We declare peace, we declare hope, we declare life in these people right now because of who you are Jesus. Come on church, won't you lift up the name of Jesus one last time in this place. Is alive, shadows glad to see all of you this afternoon. Say hello to somebody once again. Smile at your neighbor and take your seats. Thank you very much. You braved the hot sun and came at 12 p.m. service. Good on you. <laughs> right, I would like to welcome everybody who is visiting here or who joined us for the very first time. So if you're in this building and you're here for the very first time, can I see your hands wherever you are? If you're here for the very first time, welcome. Thank you. Can I request you to please stand up wherever you are? Just would like to acknowledge your presence. Thank you once again. Can you please stand up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you out there. Thank you out there. Our ushers are going to give you a bag. In that bag, you'll find a book and a card. The book is for you to keep. The card is for us. So can you please fill out the card and give it to the ushers as you go out of this building today? I hope you're having a wonderful time in the presence of God. Thank you. Kindly be seated. God bless you. I'd like to welcome everybody who's joined us online too. So wherever you are, we welcome you. Hope you're 
enjoying worshiping God with us and I believe God has something amazing for us this afternoon and I pray that the Spirit of God will open our eyes and help me also to speak well and for you to listen well and apply it later in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right, once again, all our sermons are uploaded on YouVersion Bible app. If you follow YouVersion Bible app, uh, you can go to the events section, and in the events section, you will find Hope Unlimited Church live, and when you click on that, you will find the sermon notes from this morning. Every Sunday, that is whatever sermon is preached, it's always their notes, so you can take advantage of that. I would also encourage you to make your own notes also. So if you are in the habit of writing down or jotting them on your mobile phone, please continue to do that too. I believe that, that helps us to remember, retain what we heard over here. Amen. All right, so Holy Spirit, we pray today that you will enable us to hear well, understand well, and enable me to speak well, O oh God. I am your mouthpiece, O oh God, so use me, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There was a pastor who had a parrot. All the parrot would say was, let's pray, let's pray. The pastor tried to teach him to say other things, but to no avail. And in his parish, there was a deacon, and he also had a parrot. His parrot would always say, let's kiss, let's kiss. Now you can laugh about that, by the way. Yeah, it's all right. So one day, the deacon brings his parrot to the pastor's home. Okay, and if they put the two parrots together, and they wanted to see what would happen next. So the deacon's parrot went ahead and said, let's kiss, let's kiss. And the, parrot, the pastor's parrot looked at it and said, thank God my prayers are answered. <laughs> today we are looking at answered prayers. That's what we're going to look at today, answered prayers. So at the, at the start itself, I want to lay this foundation for all of us today, that God is a prayer answering God. Amen. God is a prayer answering. We see that so many times in the scripture that God answers prayers. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Okay, Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you. Not I sh might, I should. No, it says, I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Now, this is a promise from God. God answers every single prayer. He doesn't, sometimes he doesn't answer them the way you want it to be, but still it's an answer. So we got to understand, God answers prayer. God never leaves a prayer unanswered. Every prayer is answered, okay? So to understand how God answers our prayers, I have a small illustration for you. The illustration of traffic lights. What do you see over there? Come on, everybody, you can talk to me. What do you see over here? And what does green... Symbolize or go. So sometimes God says yes. God says yes to your prayer request. Okay, you prayed about it. Okay, here am I. Here it is, giving it to you. You see that examples in the Bible. Hannah prayed for a child. She had a child. Okay? So you see, God is a prayer answering God. And sometimes his answer is yes for us. Okay? Anybody out here who experienced that in your lives? Can I see a wave of your hands? Can you thank God for that? Amen? But not all his answers are yes. Right? All his answers are yes. What's the next color in the traffic light? And what does this symbol symbolize? What does this tell us? Pause. Wait. Or get ready. <laughs> if you're in the middle... <laughs> Wait, sometimes God, God's answers are, wait. Not yet. Get ready. Sometimes you see God answers prayers. Like we see in the story of Lazarus. So Lazarus was sick. Uh, his sister sent a message to Jesus saying, Jesus, your friend is sick, please come. And you know what does Jesus do? The Bible says he stayed in the same place wherever he was for two more days. His friend was dying, but he still chose to stay Wherever he was for two, two more days. God said, wait. Okay, that thing can wait. 
So God can answer some, sometime in, your in our lives and say, you need to wait. Not yet. Anybody in that place? Yeah? Can you lift hands and say, thank God for that? Not yet. Yeah. I'm in that place too. Not yet. But sometimes, what do you see? And what does it tell you? Stop. So sometimes God says, no. Sometimes he listens to all your requests and you feel it's an unanswered prayer, but the answer is no. God says, no. Anybody out there like that? Thank God for that too. No. God says no. And you see in the Bible, we are not, we are not the only people who struggle with that. Even the great heroes of faith struggle with that. Okay? They were denied an answer. They, do, they were denied from God. They request from God. Look up, think about Moses. God told Moses that he's, he's going to take the children of Israel into the promised land. But when God says, no, Moses, you are, you are not going to go into the promised land, but the children of Israel go. And Moses asked God, God, please. And God says, no, you are not going into the promised land. You can only see it. So God says, no. King David. King David fasted and prayed for seven days so that his child would be healed. And God said, no, his child was dead. Jeremiah pleaded with God, Lord, don't send the Babylonians to destroy your children, oh God. They're worse than our, they're worse. They did more sins than our children, so don't punish us like that. But God said, no, the Babylonians came, destroyed everything. You know, come into the New Testament. Paul said, Lord, what, we, what he calls the thorn in the flesh. He said, Lord, take it away from me. But God says, no. Jesus prayed that we all should be one. Look at how many divisions we have. In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Lord, take this cup of suffering away from me. God said, no. So you see, sometimes God says, no. And we need to learn to accept that answer and deal with it well. Sometimes we don't know how to deal with it and we mess up. And so this morning, this afternoon, I really want us to understand why would God say no and how do we cope up with that? Okay? It's a very difficult sermon to preach, by the way. I struggled when I even was preparing. It's a difficult sermon to preach. It's a difficult sermon to listen to also. So I also prayed for you guys. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to have a no. We don't like no, right? Right from our kids, we don't like no. If someone says no, you want to do it all the more. And sometimes God says no in our lives and we need to accept why would God say no. There are so many, it creates confusion, it creates frustration in our lives. Why do some people get miracles and some, some others don't? Why do some people get healed and some others don't? Why there is persistent pain in life? We don't have answers. Well, there are mysteries. Some, some of them are mysteries, but some of them are also obvious. You know, some of the obvious things in our lives, why God, God, won't, God, God says no? Because if two people pray the opposite, one of them had to be denied. For example, how many of you as a kid, you prayed that it would rain so that you won't have to go to school? Anyone prayed like that? How many times did it happen in your life? Your parents probably must pray, okay, Lord, let the rain stop so that we can go to work. Two people praying oppositely. One of them will be denied. The IPL season started. You know, my son would be praying, Lord, let sunrises win. Or some other team will win. Now some other kid would be praying, Lord, let this team win. Imagine that. Someone had to be denied. Someone will face the answer, no. And sometimes we struggle with this no, okay? We see that no. And sometimes it's, it's so hard for us to understand why, even though my request was genuine, even though my request was perfect for me, why would I still get a no from God? You need to understand something. God is not going to force it. See, sometimes if God has to answer our prayers, 
Sometimes if he had to answer every prayer, probably some prayers that you have prayed, he had to take the free will away from you or from the, some other person. Imagine if someone comes to you and say, God told me to marry you, so I'm going to marry you. How would God, God answer that prayer? What would happen if God answered that prayer? Even though you don't like the person, you still have to get married. Would you like to be in that place? No. And God's not going to work that prayer out. Because he's not going to go against your choice. He's not going against your free will. He will help you, guide you, but he'll never say no. He didn't make you a robot, by the way. He made you to choose, to make wise decisions. So God's not going to force things on you. If you're not willing to change, he's not going to force it. He's not going to force it. Some of you prayed that your husband would change, that your wife would change. Didn't happen. Because if they're not willing to change, he's not going to change them. He's not going to force himself upon him, upon them. And God's not going to force his decisions on us. He, he has given us a choice and he expects us to make the right choices. And so many areas in our lives, we make bad decisions, bad choices. And that's why we wear, bear the brunt of it. Because God doesn't force things on us. And there are times when God says, no, it's just unexplainable. Unexplainable, we don't know. But I want to tell you tonight, this afternoon, when that happens, when God says no, that is the greatest test of faith in your life. Prayers that are not answered the way you want them to be are the single greatest test of our lives. So God's saying, are you going to trust me with this or not? Are you going to believe, it, believe in me or not? Particularly when there's tragic incidents involved, accidents involved, unexplained death. Oh, we face that so many times in our churches. COVID season brought unexplained deaths. Young people died. No explanation. Our friends died. No explanation. Why? Why would that happen? We have no answers for it. We have no answers for it. Unexplainable. But the more important, the things that we need to understand is that still God is working in our lives. So today I want to do two things. Today I want to talk about why would God answer, why would God say no to some of our prayer requests? Okay? Let's understand that. Why would God say no? Okay? And we're going to look at how do we handle ourselves when we hear a no from God. Ready with that? All right. So before we see why would God say no, I want to throw a word of caution out here. The things I'm going to talk, that we're going to look at, is for our understanding. Okay? It's not for you to share with someone who is going through a situation. Okay? That's a word of caution. It's for our understanding. It's not for you to talk about this thing when someone is going through a hardship. Okay? Caution. It's used to comfort yourself. Never use them with someone in pain because you don't know why they are going through the pain. You don't have an explanation for it. You don't have, you don't know. So when exercise with caution. If you look at the story of Job. Job was a wealthy man. Jeff Bezos, I don't know who was the wealthiest man today. He was the wealthiest man of his times. He went from hero to zero in a day. <laughs> Yesterday, he woke up very well on that morning. He had everything, but by the end of the day, he lost everything. His money, his possessions, his family, everything he was lost. And he doesn't understand. Why? What's happening in my life? All of a sudden, everything is taken away from me. And he sits there. And he sits there, trying to make sense of what happened in his life. And his friends hear, hear about this. And they came. And they come. And the Bible says, these three friends of Job, they came and sat with him. And seven days they sat with him, not speaking a word. Sometimes, my friends, when someone is going through a tragic incident in their life, the best thing you and I can do is not to speak, but to be with them. Just be with them. That's what Job's friends did. For seven days, they didn't say a word, but they sat along with Job. They, be, they were with Job. That's all they did. But after seventh day, they began to speak. And that's where the problem started. They began to give logical explanations, thinking why... Job is going through what he was going through. They began to analyze, okay, 
Job, you must have sinned against God and God is punishing you for this. You must not have understood God well and God is punishing you for this. And they began to think about every logical and reasonable explanation that they could think of to help, under, to help understand why Job was going through that difficult situation in their lives. Seven days they kept quiet, they did well. But as they began to speak, they began to give explanations that were beyond them. They began to tell Job, no, you did this, you must have messed up, you, God is punishing you because of that. And Job would go on to say, no, no, I don't think I have done anything wrong against God. And Job would have de defended himself in trying to analyze, no, I don't think I did anything wrong. And they began to begin explanations, so much so that God became angry with his friends and he spoke to his, their friends. You see that in Job 42 verse 7. It says, after the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. Job has. What was God saying? He said, hey, you guys, shut your mouths. Shut your mouths. He says, I am angry with you because you have not spoken the truth about me. Sometimes when you speak things that you don't know and don't understand, you're going to get yourself into trouble. His friends, God was angry at them and said, you better stop talking, otherwise I'm going to kill you. Ask Job to pray for you, otherwise I'm not going to restore your lives. So Job had to pray for his friends and God then restored their lives back. God bless them. And sometimes in a situation like that, it's better for us to keep our mouth shut because we don't know what situation they are going through, what why would God say no in that situation? You don't have an understanding. You don't have an explanation. Just keep our mouths shut. So that's why this cautions. This is for you, for your understanding, for your benefit. Please don't use this. When someone is going through a difficult pain, it's best for you not to speak during this time. Just hang out with them. Be there for them. That's what they need. Right? So three things that why would God say no? Okay, quickly. Number one, God says no when he has a bigger perspective. He can see what you can't see. He sees the whole picture. You and I have a limited perspective, but God sees in a different perspective. He has a better picture. You know, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Everything is laid bare. It's uncovered before God. He sees. Actually, the word of God says in Isaiah 46 verse 10, it says, I make known the end from the beginning. The end from the beginning. God sees things, the end of things even before they have started. I want you to understand that that's, how, that's the kind of God we serve. God doesn't see from point A. We see linearly. We can be at point A, but we don't know what is at point B until we go there. But God can see point A, point B at one glance. He has a different perspective. He has a bigger perspective. Because God sees all and you, you and I don't see it all, we need to understand that he has an amazing perspective in our lives. And God doesn't answer the prayer the way, the way we want because he sees different than what you and I see. We see with a limited perspective but God has a bigger perspective. Every prayer, every answer to your prayers has reactions going along with it. There's a chain reaction for it. Every prayer has things falling up with that and God sees it more than you and I can do. We don't know the implications of our prayers, but God sees what can happen if he answered your prayer and sometimes he would say no to your prayers. We need to understand God has a different perspective. And the reason he's saying no is to protect you. To protect you and guard you. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 8 says, For he guards the cause of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Sometimes you and I can not see and God sees and say, Okay, if I say yes to this, this is going to happen and this is not going to be good in the end. 
So that's why I have to say no, so that it can be better in the end. Look at the life of Daniel. Let's look at the life of Daniel. When he was praying, the complaint went against him to the emperor, Darius, and says, Daniel is praying against your order. Punishment is to put him in the lion's den. I'm sure Daniel prayed, Lord, save me from lion's den. Lord, let me not go into the lion's den. Probably those three, his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prayed when they knew that the king was angry because they didn't bow. He, he turned the furnace seven times. They knew. They must have prayed, Lord, save us. Help us not to go into the fiery furnace. But you know what happened. The story goes on. They had to go through the fiery furnace and Daniel had to be in the lion's den. But in the midst of that, that's what you have to realize and encourage ourselves that God was still there with them. God was still there with them. Sometimes you, know, you need to go through the fire. Sorry to say that. I don't like it. I don't like it. But sometimes you need to go through the fire. You need to be in the lion's den. But in those places, in those seasons, in those times, know that he has a bigger perspective. Paul. Let's look at the life of Paul. Paul also was a great guy, but so many times he was denied by God. He wanted to go to Rome, but God says no. God says no. But Paul thought, Paul was a firebrand preacher. He wanted to evangelize the whole world. He had a great message. He wanted to go evangelize the world. He wanted to evangelize the city of Rome. And he said, God, let me go to Rome. I want to preach your gospel. Probably Paul thought he was going to hire the Colosseum that you all see there. Do a mass crusade or just invite the nice people, band, everything musical. And we're going to preach the word of God. We're going to see souls saved. But God said no. Great vision. But God said no. Sometimes it look, might look great for you. But God has a different perspective. And we see that in Paul's life. Paul eventually goes to Rome. But not in the way he wanted to go to Rome. He thought he would go in a cruise liner, but he had to go as a prisoner. He had to go in chains to Rome. He wanted to preach in Rome, but he had to do it in a different way. He not only spoke to the Romans, but he also spoke, spoke to each one of you because he wrote what we call the letters or the epistles. Imagine that. If Paul was not taken in as a prisoner, he would have never had the opportunity to probably to write one third of the New Testament. And you and I, we don't know how to conduct our lives in our walk with God. Different perspective. So I want to encourage you this afternoon. When God says no, he has a bigger perspective. Number two, when God says no, he has a better plan. He has a better plan. What is God saying? He said, I, I want to answer your prayer, but not now. But I have something different for you. I have something else for you. This is not the best for you. I'm going to give you something else. See, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 says like this. I don't think the way you think. The way you work is in the way I work. Come on. For as the sky soars high above earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. See, God thinks of us in a different way. He has better plans for us. He works better in our lives. So when God says no, He has a better plan for our lives. Anything. Sometimes when you feel that place, you are in that place, when you feel, when God is saying no, just understand He has a greater perspective and He has a better, better plan for us. Okay? And the Bible talks about so many people who had to really un understand this truth in their lives. God had a better plan for, uh, for them. We see in the life of Joseph, we studied of Joseph during our see, uh, uh, theme of dreams. Joseph wanted to be the ruler. He had a dream that he would be the ruler. He thought his friend, his brothers would come along. His family would come along and support him and he'll have opportunities and that will elevate him to be the leader. But look at what happened in his life. Instead of his family supporting him, they rejected him. They sold him off. And after so selling him off, he had to face prison once again. He was accused wrongly, faced prison. But in the, in the end again, he still became the ruler. Joseph thought his dream would go in this way. But God said, no, that's not that way. Your dream is going to come this way. 
Sometimes God has different plans. And there are so many um, people in the Bible. And God said, tells about them in Hebrews chapter 11. God talks about them in Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 32 says, I could go on and on, but I've run out of time. There are so many more. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets. Through acts of faith, they toppled kingdoms made justice work, took the promises for themselves. They were protected from lions, fire, sword thrusts, turned disadvantages to advantages, won battles, routed alien armies. Women received their loved ones back from their dead. Said, great, these are all great. Amazing things happened. But it goes on to say, now there were those who, under torture, refused to give in. Somebody was saved, some people didn't get saved. And go free, preferring something better, resurrection. Others braved abuse and whips, and yes, chains and dungeons. We have stories of those who were stoned, sawed in two, murdered in cold blood, stories of vagrants wandering the earth in animal skins, homeless, friendless, powerless. The world didn't deserve them, making their way as best they could on the cruel edges of the world. Not one of these people says, these are great people of faith. They are great promises. They've made great prayers. And God says, not all of them had their answers the way they wanted them to be. Not one of these people, even though their lives of faith were exemplary. They were people full of faith, not faithless people. Full of exemplary faith. Got their hands on what was promised. God had a better plan for us that their faith and our faith would come together to make one completed whole. What is he saying? He's saying that some of them are still waiting for their promises to be fulfilled. And he says, they will only be complete when your faith and my faith join along with them will be made complete one day. People, we, only, we, are, we thank God for all amazing things, but there are people who suffered, went through horrible things. God says, they still are waiting. Because God has a better plan in our lives. So I want to encourage you. God has a better plan. You might not understand it. Trust him. God has a better plan. Number three. When God says no, he has a greater purpose. He has a greater purpose. God always acts good and in love for each other. What a powerful message David brought. Love wins. God always acts in love. He wants to act, all of us to act in love. Because he's a loving God. Psalm 57 verse 2 says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He has a greater purpose in our life. You and I can't see it, can't understand it sometimes, but he has a greater purpose. So sometimes he has to deny our prayers so that his purposes will be fulfilled. I know it's, it's, it's hard to understand that. It's hard to accept that. But this is what, how God says that. You know, Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. We read that, we read that earlier also. Okay, he says, who, God who knows the end from the beginning, he says like this, my purpose will stand. And sometimes God has to deny us to make sure his purposes stand. God isn't obligated to explain to us, by the way. He's not obligated to explain to us why he does what he does. He doesn't owe us an explanation. He is God. And there are some things that you don't understand. But he says, I have a purpose for your life. I have a purpose in, for your life. Sometimes you need to understand some realities over here. There are some things that you'll never understand until you get to heaven. There are some answers you'll never get until you get to heaven. I don't have them. You won't have it. We need to embrace it. There are things, probably said, why would this happen in my life? Why would this person die? No answer. Probably you'll get a chance to, when you meet God in heaven and say, okay, you can ask Jesus, why would you allow this to happen? And he'll give you an explanation that you will be mind bamboozled. Because he sees a different perspective. And he has a greater purpose in our, life, in the, in our lives. We're not going to understand anything he, and that sometimes we don't understand things in this place. But all, I need to under, all we need to understand is that he is still working in our lives. You know, sometimes we have to also understand there is something called redemptive suffering. We see that in the Bible. You know, once they brought a blind man to Jesus, 
And they asked him the question, Lord, what caused his blindness? Is it the sin of their father or mother? Or it is, is it his sin? And Jesus says, neither. No, this is there because to reveal the glory of God. Sometimes we don't understand what God is trying to do in our lives. To reveal the word of God. Redemptive servant. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what Jesus did. He went through the pain so that he can bring redemption for you and me. That's what Jesus did. He went through pain for us to be redeemed from that pain. And you see in the world, so many ministries have started because of the pain that they're going through and they made God use their pain to bring redemption to someone else. So many people have started orphanages or adoption centers. Why? Because they were childless. They were childless and said, okay, what can we do about this? And they started something. So many struggling with addictions. They realized how difficult it is and said, we don't want others to go through this pain. Let me be that redemptive. I went through it. I don't want others to go it, so let me help them. And started centers where you can help people out of addictions. God can use your pain to bring redemption. We need to understand that. God can use our pain to bring redemption because he has a greater purpose for our lives. So three reasons. He has a better perspective, better plan for us, and a greater purpose in our lives. We try to embrace these things in our lives and trust God that He is there with us in our difficult situations. He is working. You and I cannot see, but He's still there working with us. Amen? So how do we handle this? How do we go about this? When you encounter and know from God, how do we go about this? What should be our attitude? What should we be doing? Number one, trust that God does everything in goodness and love. God does everything in goodness and love. Psalm 25 verse 10 says, All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of His covenant. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. He called you according to His purpose, and He's going to make, turn things around for you. Maybe not in this life, but you're going to see that one day when you meet Him. The redemption He brought. Why He did certain things the way He thinks. So remember that He works in a loving way. He's not trying to put you down, but he's trying to work out his purposes in our lives. Okay? So when you encounter a no from God, either you can accept it or you can reject it. You can reject, say, God, I don't care. You're not an answering God. So I'm, I'm not going to believe in you. You can walk away from him. Or you can just say, God, I relax in you. I rest in you. Knowing that you have, seeing from a different perspective, that you have a greater plan, and a better purpose, greater purpose for my life. Trust that God does everything in goodness and love. Number two, when in pain, pray what Jesus prayed facing the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed that prayer. Beautiful prayer. Mark, Mark chapter 14, verse 35 to 36. He says, he went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. And he goes on, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yes, I want your will to be done, but not mine. He surrendered himself to God. Sometimes you and I, the best thing they can do is to say, God, I don't understand. I know you can do this. I know you can change it, but I surrender myself to you, God. Here, Jesus affirms God's power. He said, you can do it, God. We can affirm God's power. And we can ask God to take it, but sometimes we need to let go and say, God, help me understand that. Number three, expect God to give his grace to handle his answer. Grace, we all need his grace. Sometimes when you get a no, we need grace to handle it. Grace is God's power to handle pain. Grace is God's power to do the right thing anyway, even though you don't might not look, even though it's painful. We talked about Apostle Paul. The Bible says what he calls the thorn in the flesh. He said three times he prayed for it. 
and he encountered a no. We see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. It says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that God's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Rick Warren says like this, everything that he's learned is learned through pain. What a great statement. Everything that you and I learn, we learn more in our pain. We learn less in our pleasure. We learn a lot through pain. And sometimes when you go through pain, I want you to know God's teaching you something. God's building your character. God's building your faith. I know it's frustrating. I know it's difficult. But can we get this picture today, this morning, that God has given us His grace. His grace for us for this season of our lives. Some of you prayed, it didn't happen. Some of you prayed that your loved one would never die, but it happened. Ask God for His grace through that season. Some of you prayed that your divorce won't come. You prayed you would not be divorced, but it happened. Sorry, it happened. The door is closed. Chapter is closed. Ask God for His grace. Ask God for His grace. Sometimes when you encounter no, you need to surrender yourself to God and expect His grace to lead you through in that situation. Psalm 9 verse 10 says like this, Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. He's never forsaken those who seek Him. Even though when He says no, He's still there with you. He's still there with you. He hasn't abandoned you. He'll never will. He never will. You see, Daniel in the lines, he was there through the fire, through the den. He was there and he's there with you. You might be encountering a note today. Can I encourage you? Can I lift your spirits up today? That God is still working in your life. You might not understand it. I might not understand it. But God sees it from a higher perspective. God has a better plan, and God has a greater, pers greater purpose for our lives. Take courage. Take courage. Take courage. He's with you in this moment too. Can we all close our eyes for a moment? First thing that I want to do, even as we enter into this time, I want us to give an opportunity for everyone, anyone who never received Jesus as their Lord and Savior to receive Him as their Savior. You know why? Why would I do that first? Because I want to know it's not easy in life. But with God, He'll give you the strength to go through those difficulties. But without God, it's always a challenge. So maybe you are here, never received Jesus into your life. He's saying, hey, I'm going to come along with you. I want to be your friend. I want to be your guide. I want to be your father. I want to be there for you. And he's, he's opening his arms, saying, come. Come to me. So if you are in this congregation, never receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, as every eye is closed in this building, I want you to lift up your hands to God and say, God, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Because that will help you to get your footing right. And that will help you to get on track with God and He's going to be there in all your troubles, in all your challenges. You can be assured that He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So if you are in this congregation, never received Jesus into your life and you want to do that, just lift up your hands wherever you are. Don't be ashamed of it. God speaking to you right now. Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands there. Thank you. Thank you. This is a moment between you and God. Don't be worried about what people are going to say or going to think. This moment is going to change your life. I believe it changed my life one day. Anyone else before I pray? All right. All those who lifted hands, I just want to pray this prayer out aloud. 
and we hope you see, we believe everyone will join along with you and pray this prayer out aloud. So all those who lifted up, just pray this prayer from the bottom of your hearts. Heavenly Father, come on. Everybody, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, I believe in your work. I ask you for forgiveness of all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Jesus, I believe in you with all my heart and confess you with my mouth that you are Lord. Come live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray for everyone who's making that prayer for the very first time or rededicating their lives to you, God. I pray, Spirit of God, that will bring greater understanding and revelation into their lives, that the decision that they took just now, we, I pray that they will know that what a transformation it can bring into their lives. And we seal it by your Holy Spirit this afternoon, O oh God. And the devil will not rob the joy of their salvation in any way. We thank you, Lord, for that. Just want all of us to stand up, even as we come to a close. And I know some of us are struggling with that answer, no from God. I do. I struggle with it. There are so many times I've prayed for years and years, I still didn't get an answer. I struggle with it. Lord, why? I'm your servant. I'm in your kingdom. I'm working for you. Why would you do that? For Why would you do that? I don't know. But this afternoon, all I can do is lift up my hands and surrender and say, God, give me the grace. Give me the grace to go through this in my life. So, you feel that? Just lift up your hands unto God and say, God, I surrender myself afresh to you. And give me the grace to that. He's his word says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Here we are, God. Thank you, Spirit of God. There was day that you let me fall. All of my life, your love has been true. And all of my life, I will worship. There was in a day, yes, Lord, you not by my side. There was in a day that you let me fall. Come on, that's a great promise. That's a great truth. Your love has been true. And all of my life, I will worship you. There was a day that you run by my side. Lord, I thank you for that. There was a day that you led. lift it up in worship in surrender yes God we want to understand everything in life but we know this God that you see it you see in a different way you have a bigger plan for us and a greater purpose for us God so I just pray for everyone who's here today oh God who are struggling in that area oh God I pray Lord let their faith will never diminish oh God let their courage will never go down, oh God, in believing you. And I pray there will be a newness in the spirit right now. I pray there will be a freshness, oh God, in the spirit to continue to believe in you, continue to encourage themselves in you, God, that your God will never let them go for a single moment of their lives, oh God. 
So here we are, God. We take confidence in this this afternoon, oh God, that you'll never fail us. So I pray, hope to rise in their hearts, oh God. Courage to rise in their hearts, God. So no matter what happens, they'll put their faith in you. No matter what happens, they'll put their trust in you. No matter what happens, we will still keep worshiping you. No matter what happens, we will keep believing in you. Come on, church. Let us be a prayer today. confidence that is there will not be a day when he'll never fail you never for a second god bless the church have a great week